Hey everyone, welcome to chapter 14 of Principles of Marketing. This chapter is all about retailing and the retail industry. The learning outcomes for this chapter are to explain the importance of, US, of the retailer within the channel and the U.S. economy, list and understand the different types of retailers, explain why non-store retailing is on the rise and the list the advantages of its different forms, Discuss the different retail operation models and understand why they vary in strategy and format. Explain how retail marketing strategies are developed and executed. Discuss how service retailing differs from goods retailing. Understand how retailers address product service failures and discuss the opportunities that service failures provide. Summarize current trends related to customer data, analytics, and technology. The importance of retailing. Retailing, its definition is all activities directly related to the sale of goods and services to the ultimate consumer for personal non-business use. A retailer is a channel intermediary that sells mainly to consumers. So we already know what a retailer is. You as a consumer uh, have gone to a retail store obviously and go on a regular basis. At the core business of it, though, it's all about defining retailing as providing a good or service to a B2C consumer, business to consumer. All right, there is B2B businesses out there, <clears throat> but primarily when you think of retailing, it's truly a product or service being sold to a direct consumer. The retail industry in America <clears throat> is vast, right? There's been lots of competition, all types of retail stores, stores that offer a variety of products and all kind of types of categories. Stores such as Walmart and Target. There are specialized retailers that specialize in selling one type of category. Sporting goods, for example. <clears throat> Sports Authority was once a, a dominant player in the sporting goods industry, but went out of business. And Dick's Sporting Goods now is a dominant player in the sporting goods industry. <clears throat> Other categories that are direct to consumer, such as Ikea or at home are retailers that primarily focus on furniture and home goods. The retail industry in America comprises mostly of small businesses. It's dominated by a small number of large companies. So the retail industry in America is very focused on a very core number of competitors. You don't see a lot of small mom and pop retail chains out there. Now there are some. There are national chains and also regional chains. Keep that in mind as well. Let's explore further the types of retailers and retail operations. So what classifies a retail operation? Retail establishments can be classified based on the type of ownership. Are they a public or a private company? Level of service. Do they offer just the sales of products and services or do they offer actually services in stores? Think of Best Buy. They sell products, but they also offer in-store services to repair your electronics. Product assortment. What identifies a certain retail establishment is truly what they sell. What are the categories into which they operate it? And price. Are you a low-end retailer or a high-end? Classification of retail operations based on ownership arrangement. So an independent retailer. Establishment is owned by an individual or a group. You could be a chain store. Part of a group of the same store is owned and operated by a single organization. Target. Walmart, for example, whereas the independent retailer is a what they call a mom and pop or a solely owned retail store with maybe one or a few footprints. Then there's franchises. The relationship which the business rights to operate and sell a product are granted by the franchisor to the franchisee. This is the same as convenience stores. Think of 7-Eleven. Well, 7-Eleven is considered a convenience store. Many 7-Elevens in the country are franchise owned. The same can be for a retailer as well. Classifications of retail operations based on level of service and product assortment. Level of service. Full service to self-service. Do you walk into a store and you have the employees do everything for you? Or does the store offer the ability for the employee to do everything for you? From helping to transact the transaction, to setting up the service, to actually conducting the service in store. That's a full service type of operation. Self-service is where you walk in, find the product, and walk out buying the product on your own without much help from an employee. 
At an extreme low end of service continuum, a retailer may take the form of a product kiosk or vending machine. Think about self-service checkouts now. Many retailers are really operating with those self-service checkouts. That's what it's all about. It's that speed to offer the ability to have more flexibility for our consumers to get in and out quickly. Product assortment. Classification based on the width and depth of product lines. Again, how expanded is your category footprint in your store? And what types of categories of products do you sell? The width is the assortment of products offered. You offer a wide range of, of, of offerings, many different options for the consumer, or are you narrow? The depth is also the number of different brands offered within each assortment. For example, if you sell clothing, do you have five brands versus 20? Something like that. Here's a chart which you can take a moment to pause and look at on the types of stores and the characteristics. To see the element of level of service, product assortment, product assortment, price, and what really matters also gross margin of profitability. Take a moment, pause here, and just review this chart to get informed. Types of in-store retailer operations, department stores, specialty stores, supermarkets, drug stores, convenience stores, and discount stores, and finally restaurants. All of these are different types of retailer operations. Now you may say, for example, at the very bottom, restaurants, well, why? At the end of the day, some restaurants sell product, Cracker Barrel. They have a little store inside of their restaurant. Retailers also, or excuse me, restaurants also sell merchandise, the t-shirts for the restaurant, perhaps other types of merchandise as memorabilia or souvenirs. That counts as well. Anywhere where you sell a product to a consumer, it's considered a retailer. Categories of discount stores, full-in discount stores, super centers, specialty discount stores. And in these specialty discount stores, there's called something called category killer. These are the really low end kind of price point retailers that offer very low end pricing. Warehouse club, your Costco's, your Sam's clubs, off price retailers, your Ross, your TJ Maxx, factory outlets, used good retailers. But what's going on in the retail industry the last several years? And we know it as a consumer. It's the rise of non-store retailing, digital retailing, e-commerce. Non-store retailing enables the shoppers without physically visiting a store location. You can shop in the comfort of your own home or wherever you are with your device. The different forms of retailing that it's non-store. Automatic vending, direct retailing, direct marketing, online retailing. Let's talk about each one of these in more detail. The various retail operating models. Trade-offs inherent to restrictive operating models have led to emergence of hybrid retail operations and online store only retailers. Some retailers have gone just to online because of the benefit the, that they can offer a wide range of products online without the you know physical capacity constraints within a retail store. <clears throat> also, because of the emergence of online shopping, retailers know that more customers rather shop online than in store, depending on the type of product or service you offer. As mentioned, online only retailers have low operating costs. The inventory investment is really in the warehouse versus physical storefront. Plus you're not paying for the overhead and leases for the physical stores. <laughs> they can showcase their items to potential customers all around the world. They're not narrow in on a target audience in one physical location. They can actually offer online to a very global audience. Most retail stores remain operationally and tactically similar to businesses. Now let's talk about the core of executing a retail marketing strategy. We've gone through what the different types of retail operations are and the different types of retail stores. Now you develop a retail marketing strategy. The first thing you need to do in marketing strategy in general, but especially in retail, is developed based on the goals established by the stakeholders and the overall strategic plans developed by the company leadership. What are the strategic tasks that precede tactical decisions? You need to define and select your target market. First off, who is your audience? Who are the customers you're targeting? Is it a segment of customers based on demographics, regionality, on the types of products they buy? A lot of the times in retail marketing, you provide a targeted market based on what they buy. Who has an affinity or desire to buy certain types of categories, brands, or products. 
Then you need to develop the retailing mix. The mix is what is the product going to be? And also what are the advertisements you're going to do? Is it an email blast versus versus a print flyer, social media post? What types of advertising are you going to do? So I need to find your target market. The process, be, process begins with market segmentation, which we covered in this class already. Retailers need to be sensitive to changes in consumer preferences. And not just on what they shop for, but how they shop. What really retailers need to understand is that the products and brands which customers buy may not change that often, but how they shop. How they look for a quick and easy way to find what they're looking for in an easy fashion, either online or in store. Target markets are defined by, the, like I said before, demographics, geographic boundaries, and cycle. Here's the retailing mix. This is how you define your target market. Between the product, the place, the promotion, the price, presentation, and personnel. All of these factors combined, you need to analyze and evaluate to develop your target market. Pause here to review this slide in more detail. So how do you develop a promotion strategy? A promotion strategy includes the following, advertising, public relations and publicity, a sales promotion. So any one of these as a promotion can be how you're going to advertise, how much publicity is it going to be given, and what is the actual value of the sales promotion, the percent off, the discount. What are the risks to a retail promotion strategy? Brand cannibalization. What this means is the reduction of sales for one brand as a result of the introduction of a new product. <clears throat> Think about the launch of a new Apple Watch. When the Apple Watch 5 comes to market, the new one last fall, you got excited about it as an Apple consumer, perhaps, if you're an Apple consumer. But what does that do? It cannibalizes, perhaps, other watches in the industry, other brands, and also Apple itself for the sales of Apple Watch 4. Because people generally are brand loyal and want the launch of that new product. That's just an example. The place. Factors to be considered while choosing a location are the economic growth potential. Should I put these in certain stores where I know it's going to grow or online and target it to markets where I know I can get the best sales return for my investment on that inventory? The amount of competition. How much competition do I have to face? Geography. Stores in isolated locations must become destination stores in order to be successful. Any retail chain has top stores. They want to make sure that those top marketing campaigns and retail marketing promotions are in. Now, this is true presentation of a retail store. Influencing the factors creates a store's atmosphere. The employee type and dens density. Do you have a really engaging employee staff? Are they really involved in what is going on in the promotion? Do they offer great customer service? What is the merchant type, merchandise type and density? What is the fixture type and density, as in how is it displayed in store? Is it easy to find? Is it front and center in the store, or is it at the end of an aisle? The sounds, odors, and visual factors. Do you have media playing around it? Video, music. What's engaging about your retail display is really important. And the layout of the store. Is it a very store that's cluttered? Too many aisles? How do I get around to find what I'm looking for easily? That's important when it comes to retail marketing. Personnel. Salespeople are trained in the following selling techniques. Training up. They are the type to persuade customers to buy either the upgraded model or also that add-on merchandise. Suggestion selling. One key way to do retail marketing is to always have your store staff equipped to say, hey, you're buying this. Why don't you buy this as well? Or upgrade them to a better model. Retailing decisions for services. Service industries are customer-oriented, and service qual quality is priority. In service industries, you've got to be focused on the quality of your service to make customers repeat customers. Service distribution focuses on minimizing wait times. Nobody wants to wait as long as they sh should have to, so reducing that wait time is key. Managing service capacity. Improving service delivery. Establishing channel-wide network coherence. So how do you address retail product service failures? We've all had a situation where we've had a bad experience in our purchasing or shopping experience at a retail. Here's how you, as a retailer, recover that service failure. Best retailers have plans in place to recover and benefit from lapses in service. Actions that may be taken are notifying customers in advance of stockouts. So perhaps you're looking for something online and it says out of stock. Well, that's good. You don't want to waste someone's time to buy it and not expect it to get it. Um, also, if you go into a store and you're looking for a major promotion that was in the sales flyer, 
Well, up front, there's a sign that says out of stock. Implementing liberal return policies. What this means is very straightforward return policies that are easy and clear to understand, giving the customer an awareness about how much time they have to return a product and also what the service element's going to be for them. And there's no vague vagueness in what they're doing from a return policy perspective. Issuing product recalls in conjunction with promotional offers. So if there's a product recall, then they offer some incentive to come back and buy something else. Retailer and retail customer trends and advancements. Emerging technologies used by retailers. Big data analytics. It's the process of discovering patterns in large data sets for the purposes of extracting knowledge and understanding human behavior. Looking at shopping behavior analytics and trends of consumer insights is what retailers thrive on nowadays to make decisions on marketing strategy and other operational strategy in retail. If they can look at how customers are shopping and where the trend is going, they can make decisions to be competitive in today's very demanding retail landscape. Beacon. It sends out connecting signals to customers' smartphones and tablets in order to bring them into a retail store or improve their shopping experience. What this is, it's targeted advertising in a time and place to where, you know, a retailer knows they're in a radius or a geo-targeted location to get them to come in and do business. Facial recognition and biometric sensors are also involved. Shopper marketing and shopper analytics. Shopper marketing. Understanding how target consumers behave in different channels and formats. How does a shopper or a consumer shop online versus in-store? How does a shopper online interact with social media versus just on a website? All of those dynamics are very important. Information is leveraged to generate sales or other positive outcomes. Manufacturers and retailers use shopper analytics to understand shopping behavior, but also to understand how marketing campaigns engage with consumers based on their emotions and their behaviors. How do they react to marketing campaigns based on click-throughs, uh, click-to-open rates, and other metrics and KPIs? The sales fine-tune and develop or change market offerings. That is the end of this video lecture. There are other areas of this chapter for you to review. These are the highlights I wanted to make sure you understood. Thank you for your time in reviewing this video lecture.